So today's webinar speaker is Takumi Kera from Tohoku University. Takumi is a graduate student in the Department of Geophysics, Tohoku University, who works a numerical simulation for the Geodyna. Specifically, Takumi is uh, interested in the uh, processes of the geomanic dipole reversals and dynamics of the fruit in the uh, arches outer core during the reversals. So Takumi had just finished the, his two years master course project and his thesis. And today he's introducing his latest results of the energy transfer of the fluid motion in the outer core during the dipole reverse, reversals. Okay, Takumi, it's your time. <laughs> Please go ahead. Thank you for invitation today. And we study in order to deepen our understanding of the geomagnetic reversal mechanism. And we try to clarify the driving source of the equatorial antisymmetric flow. Antisymmetric flow is important for the geomagnetic reversal mechanism. And we performed numerical dynamic simulations uh, like this, and uh, uh, we analyzed the energy transport into the antisymmetric flow. Uh, first, in this section, introduction, uh, first, we will review the special and temporal structure of magnetic fields. And next, we will review the generation of the magnetic field by the dynamo. And finally, I will show the goal of this research. First, let's review special structure of the geomagnetic field. Geomagnetic field has nearly a symmetric dipole field like this. Uh, however, it is more complicated in the CMB uh, like this. And CMB which is near the dynamo region. So that is a geomagnetic field has a higher wave number component than the dipole field. And the Earth's magnetic field also fluctuates over time. Although it is slowly, that is, with a geological time scale. For example, the left animation is the time variation of the magnetic field on the CMB. As you can see uh, here, uh, the strongest patches are moving westward. And another of the most significant changes in the magnetic fields is the reversal of polarity. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field changes the direction about a few times every, uh, every million year. Um, the dipole field is dominant during the period between reversals. In this study, we will focus on the mechanism of the uh, polarity reversal. So, how far has our understanding of the mechanism progressed? Uh, the current situation is that we don't understand very well. We have very limited information from paleomagnetic observation because it is difficult to make simultaneous and multiple point observations. And because of complexity of the magnetization process, so we have difficulty in recovering the direction and amplitude of polar magnetic field with accurate age. And in the first place, it is impossible to obtain direct observation of the flow in the outer core. Um, this flow of ion liquid generates the geomagnetic field. So this is very important key for reversal mechanism, but we can't observe it at least directly. However, we can get the information of flow at core mountain boundary. 
and I'll show you the results of previous study later. Anyway, in order to understand the magnetic field generation and the change in particular reversal mechanism, the dynamo model is an essential way. And I'd like to review the dynamo model for a moment. Let's start with the simplest example here. Consider a iron liquid, a no iron rod like this. In addition, there is a magnetic field around it. And what happens when this rod crosses through it? And these properties are involved. If there is no magnetic diffusivity, magnetic field lines move with a fluid motion. And in this case, an iron rod. And let's try to move the rod. Then the magnetic field lines were dragged and curved like this. Of course, there are no such roads in the outer core, but there are the iron liquid. And essentially, the same thing happens. Let's see the simulation example and how is magnetic field induced by conductive fluid. This figure shows simulated magnetic field line in spherical dynamo model. And the color lines show the magnetic field intensity. And the magnetic field lines are curved here. And the magnetic field is strong on both sides. This stretching is caused by zonal fluid motion and called omega effect. And here, magnetic field lines are concentrated and strengthened. This is the result of magnetic field lines gathered by a horizontally converging flow, like this. In order to simulate the change of magnetic field lines by flows, we need to solve these equations. We need to calculate the time variation of the flow and time variation of the magnetic field. And we also need a driving source for the flow. And in the acid outer core, both thermal and compositional convection have been considered. But for simplicity, only thermal convection is considered here. And it is believed that the incompressible approximation is sufficient for the fluid in the outer core. So we impose a constraint on velocity like this, that is, its divergence is zero. And from Gauss's law of the uh, magnetic field has zero divergence. And uh, viscosity and other physical property values are controlled by using these non-dimensional parameters. And in the rotation spherical shell, typical flow structure is columnar like this. And this property can be explained by taylor Pradman theorem. That is, the uh, flow cannot change along rotation axis in rotating system. And this columnar flow is accompanied by equatorially symmetric flow like this. The origin of this metric flow is understood by force balance at the boundary. The schematic diagram is here. And first, uh, considering low pressure at the upper boundary. And this is seen from north. 
and the low pressure has inward force by pressure gradient. This pressure gradient must be balanced with Coriolis force and viscosity. In the end, the velocity is counterclockwise and slightly inward. Second, considering high pressure, and now pressure gradient uh, cause outward force. And velocity must be directed like this. Then Coriolis force and viscosity can be balanced with pressure gradient. Uh, in the results, the velocity is clockwise and divergence from high pressure. Because of continuity into the low pressure clump converge horizontally, like this, and then pump out equator ward. Conversely, from a high pressure clump diverge horizontally then pump up from equator and this condition is uh, in northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere and the results flow structure show equatorially symmetric like this and columnar and symmetric flow is important for generation of dipolar magnetic field these are the schematic diagram of the generation mechanism of the dipolar magnetic field. And columnar flow has two effects to generate a magnetic field. First, uh, draw the magnetic field line into this valley, like this. And second, this equator ward flow and this pole ward flow and that is axial flow distort and generate axial component of the magnetic field like this and this process also occur in the southern hemisphere like this And the magnetic field generated in a northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. There are, uh, they will finally reconnect here and here. In the end, dipole field can be generated. And uh, we can conclude here that. Uh, Columnar and symmetric property of flow is important to generate dipolar magnetic field. Uh, if so, what happens during the dipolar reversal to the flow? Um, the previous study showed that the polarity reversal is related to equatorially and symmetric flow. And this figure shows the schematic diagram of the reversal process. It shows a meridional cross section. And uh, line is a streamline. And orange and dark blue shows a sign of zonal component of electric current. Here, locally generated inverse current and then uh, advected to other hemisphere like this. In the end, the current is globally inversed. These results suggested that the antimetric flow contribute to reversal by transporting locally generated inverse magnetic fields along the CMB. The relationship between antisymmetric flows and 
reversals can also be seen in parallel magnetic measurements. In this slide, I'll show the study to estimate a placebo flow on core surface to reproduce the measured parallel magnetic variation. Uh, this is a uh, estimated flow, and this is a uh, polar magnetic measurements. And uh, look at these left figures. And the model magnetic field during the reversal in color, and arrows shows the estimated flow. And the arrow links shows amplitude of flow. Upper pictures show flow to reproduce variation in inclination, and the lower pictures show flow to reproduce variation in VGP latitude. <laughs> and uh, this left is before the reversal, and these right figures is during the reversal. And we can see flows here. Uh, flows crossing the equator are stronger during the reversal than before the reversal. So how does the antisemitic flow grow? In this slide, we will look at previous studies that suggest what is the important term in occurrence of reversals. The focus is on inertia and buoyancy and Lorentz force. By the Nishikawa and Kusano, Lorentz force is an important term. Uh, they analyze the energy conversion between flow and magnetic field. And also under Christensen, so the inertia is the uh, important term because loss V number is larger in a uh, reversing dynamo. And so Nibison shows buoyancy is important force because rate number uh, increasing and uh, reversing Dynamo is computed. But, however, relative assessment is not reported. And uh, I believe that it is necessary to compare these terms in order to know which term is important in the end. We think that investigation of the energy flux into antisymmetric velocity field is effective approach. This is the schematic diagram of energy flux among the flow and the magnetic field with different equatorial symmetry. For this antisymmetric flow, energy input by buoyancy and inertia. And output by magnetic induction and viscous dissipation. And we compute these quantities and qualify which term contributes most. Purpose in this study is to clarify the drivers of antisymmetric flow. In order to accomplish this purpose, we calculate the energy of flux into the antisymmetric flow. And in addition, um, we make sure that the antisymmetric flow contributes to reversals as a previous study. And uh, in this section, uh, we introduce the dynamic simulation code, Calypso, and our using settings for the model. We used dynamic simulation code Calypso 
The code is open source code for Animerica Dynamos and released and maintained by CIG. And this package has 90 pages of documentation. And the code is confirmed to scaling to 30,000 cores. And support various boundary conditions. The code is using the numerical method. For radio discrete edition, second of the finite difference method is used. And for horizontal discrete edition, spherical harmonics expansion is used. And for time stepping, for the linear diffusive terms, the crank Nicholson method is used. The for the other terms. Second order atom splash force method is used. And um, Calypso version 2 will be released soon. And you can get uh, more information from uh, this address. And we show the settings of this study. We consider rotating spherical shell as acid core. So we set the aspect ratio is 0 0.35. And the two boundary, outer boundary and the inner boundary is co-rotating. And this spherical shell is filled by conductive fluid. And uh, this fluid is business fluid, and the fluid is summary driven. These are uh, uh, settings for this study. For boundary conditions, we're using non slip boundary for velocity, and for magnetic field, we used insulating conditions. And for temperature, uh, heat flux is fixed at CMB and ICB so that uh, heat flow is balanced. And for initial conditions, um, velocity is zero at first. And we give magnetic field a seed dipole and give temperature sectorial mode. And we used special resolution like this. And we used dimensionless numbers. Uh, we set it like this. And these settings is based on previous research Sir Nevison in order to perform the reversing dynamo. We will show the results. Uh, in this study, multiple reversals were observed. In this figure, we re recognize 12 reversals. And in this slide, in particular, for this reversal, uh, the movie shows the appearance of the outer core during this reversal. Uh, not yet start the movie. Uh, this is the reversal start. And uh, south side blue magnetic field is being created. And uh, let's start the movie. Blue magnetic field line is uh, generating, and upper ring, ring flow is here, and the uh, magnetic field is weakened. And red uh, southward magnetic field is start to generate. 
and the reverse is completed. So this operating plume that is anti-symmetric component grows during the reversal. So the next thing to investigate is how does it affect the reversal and what is driving this flow. Um, in this slide, uh, I show the meridian cross section analysis. And the results show the maintenance mechanism of the equatorially anti-symmetric zonal flow and uh, the contribution to the magnetic field generation. For these two figures on the left, left is a zonal flow and the right is a temperature field. For zonal flow, we can see equatorially and symmetric structure. And for the temperature field, at this time is equatorially and symmetric. Uh, sorry, these figures is snapshots during the reversal. And uh, all the uh, same moment. Uh, and from these figures, we can conclude that uh, by the summer wind, the anti-symmetric zonal flow is maintained. And then let's see these right two figures. This figure shows a zonal flow in line and zonal magnetic field in color. And this shows uh, zonal flow in line and work of Lorentz force in color. And this figure shows a strong zonal magnetic field is here in the southern hemisphere. And this schematic representation of this situation is like this. Um, it is expected that the zonal magnetic field is generated by the omega effect. And we look at the plot of the magnetic field generation. The blue shows the magnetic field generation. And we can see that there is a strong magnetic field generation at the uh, corresponding location, like this, here and here. So we can conclude that the antisymmetric zonal flow contributes to magnetic field generation by omega effect. And not only the toroidal component, but also the component contributes to the reversal. This figure shows a thermal relation of stream line and magnetic field line in the meridian cross section when the dipole axis is crossing the equator. This is the dipole tube. And the stream line shows that the flow is from southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere. And this flow advects magnetic field like this. So then we address the main question. What is driving this flow? In order to answer the question, we analyze the energy flows associated with symmetric and anti-symmetric velocity field. These are the energy equation for symmetric and anti-symmetric velocity field. The left hand side is the time variation of energy and uh, these Right hand side is the term that causes the time variation. 
and let's look at the each of them. First, here is the term that shows the energy injection by the buoyancy. And next, here is the work of the Lorentz force. Through this work, a conversion of energy occurs between the magnetic field and the velocity field. Next here is the inertia. Uh, we can see that the inertia causes uh, an exchange of energy between symmetric and antisymmetric flows. Finally, we have viscous dissipation here. And we added a uh, calculation routine to Calypso that allows us to calculate each of these terms. And then uh, using the data that was calculated before the routine was added, Ray calculations were performed like this and analyzed from just before the reversal. And let's take a look at the analysis results. These are the horizontal axis is a time axis and this figure shows the time variation of the dipole sheet. And this shows the uh, energy of flow. And the red line shows the energy change of symmetric flow. And this black line shows the energy change of the anti-symmetric flow. And this upper sheet figure is uh, energy flux into the symmetric flow. And this lower one shows the energy flux into the anti-symmetric flow. And the color of the line indicates the term of the energy flux. Red is the, the energy flux due to buoyancy flux. And this green line shows the uh, inertia. And this blue line shows the uh, work of the force. And this black line shows viscous dissipation. And this sign is positive. If the term is positive, the term is input of energy, and the negative term is uh, output term. With that in mind, we will organize the energy balance of the symmetric and antisymmetric flows. Please compare with this schematic diagram. Uh, first, let's look at this symmetric flow. The only energy input is uh, by the buoyancy flux. So this red arrow. And uh, output by inertia, while small. This term is negative. Therefore, we can see that the energy conversion from symmetric flow to antisymmetric flow is always occurring. And next is work of Lorentz force. These blue lines show always negative. So that is, there is always an energy conversion from symmetric flow to magnetic field. And finally, the energy of the symmetric flow goes out due to basicus dissipation. Next, the antisymmetric flow. The buoyancy input is the largest input. And there is also a smaller input from the inertia. And the negative work due to the Lorentz force. And the antisymmetric flow is also are responsible for the magnetic field generation. Although it is small. And finally, viscous dissipation. Next, we will show the how energy balance changes during the reversal. Then these C and E figure, it's hard to see the time variation. 
So let's take a look at the analysis results of this D and this F figure. This is a result of subtracting the time average from the original data. And let's focus on the reversal phase here and see how the energy flux changes. First, let's look at the symmetric flow. Obviously, the blue line, the back of the line, I suppose, shows the largest change. And it has, uh, it was always negative, so this change is decreasing the absolute value of the work of the Lorentz force. This means that the output from the symmetric flow to the magnetic field is decreasing here. In other words, look at this diagram. Induction by symmetric flow is down in the reversal. Slightly behind this fluctuation, uh, the energy conversion by inertia to the anti-symmetric flow is increasing here. And furthermore, after a slight decay, the buoyancy input to anti-symmetric flow increases here. And uh, the result is a combination of green arrow and red arrow increase. Um, this is a process of increasing of energy flux into the anti-symmetric flow. And this causes the increase of energy of anti-symmetric flow. And we believe that the increase in energy flux due to the anti due to inertia is related to the change in the structure of the convection. This is a, the energy spectrum of the antisymmetric flow. Um, this figure plotted as wave number in the horizontal. Uh, direction, horizontal longitude direction. And there are four lines and toroidal component in the reversal phase and this is a toroidal component in stable phase. And this is a polyoidal component in reversal phase and this is a polyoidal component in stable phase. And I have plotted the uh, uh, time averages for the uh, this reversal phase and this stable phase. And both of the toroidal component and the polyoidal component increases in the reversal phase. In particular. There is an increase in the component with a higher wave number. So this result suggests that the spatial structure of the convection is finer and more turbulent in the reversal phase. In other words, during the reversal period, the columnar structure, which is favorable for magnetic field generation, was disturbed. This is consistent with an increase in the uh, energy flux from symmetric to anti-symmetric flow and decreasing induction. And uh, the processes we have shown are reverse, uh, uh, the process we have shown are universal in the reversals. I have shown the result of LAN2 here. 
including this run, we analyzed six runs here. And these runs include 10 cases of reversals or excursions. And the, uh, as a result of the analysis, we can able to confirm a common processes in nine of 10 cases for these runs. And these figures summarize the process. Upper one shows a difference of energy flux between the reversal and stable periods for run two. And from the left, the work of Lorentz force and energy conversion by inertia and energy input by buoyancy flux and viscosity dissipation. And this shows how much each of these energy flux increase during the reversal phase. And it should be emphasized that here is the inertia is the largest increase in energy input to anti-symmetric flow. And in the other hand, for this run seven, in the first place, there was no increase in the energy of anti-symmetric flow during the reversal. Takumi? Yes? Sorry, two or three minutes. Oh, <laughs> uh, OK. Yeah. So uh, why wasn't the energy increase in the anti-symmetric flows in, in this case? Um, well, in this case, uh, buoyancy increases for symmetric flow, but for anti-symmetric flow, buoyancy flux was decreasing. And uh, energy conversion by inertia from symmetric flow uh, was not so increasing. So in the end, energy uh, flux into the antisymmetric flow was not so increasing in this case. So this is a conclusion. Uh, we can conclude that uh, inertia grows the antisymmetric flow. And uh, these are the summarizes our process. This process was common for nine of 10 cases in this study. That ends of this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Takumi. So she's, does anyone have a question on the chat or raise a hand? So Takumi? Yes. Looking at the parameter regime in uh, your calculation, still so like my number is pretty large. Man. So, so what, what we can ex, yeah, so the, do you think the, this behavior still can appear in the low I command number, much, much low I command number case? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, uh, no. if the ECMA number is lower than this uh, study, uh, but uh, it is also happened that uh, energy increase of uh, the flow because of the induction down. So during the reversal flow is more turbulent. So this inertia increasing is also uh, occur 
I think. Okay, thanks. And so the Natalia sent a question on the chat. So the okay. yeah, so the what was the results for the this one over ten case? What so probably you probably she asked the what happened in the, this the exceptional case. Natalia, uh, is it yeah, correct? that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the time variation for the exceptional case is here. Well, like a uh, reversal happened this time, but this black line, antisymmetric flow, is not increased. Uh, so what would it be, yes. instead of inertia, what would it be primarily? Sorry, one more please. Sorry? Uh, one more please. So could you ask again? Could you Oh, I was curious again? if, I mean, if nine out of the 10 cases are um, on the, based on the inertia, I guess. Uh, maybe I misunderstood the results, but I was curious what the exceptional results were um, being driven by. Mm. Yeah, but sorry, one yeah, more. So yeah, so the, she asks on so the, the in this external case on the. How the inertia energy flux the inertia behaves, no? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, okay. It, uh, uh, energy flux for anti symmetric flow variation is here, and uh, uh, this green line shows uh, energy flux by inertia mm, slightly. Uh, increase, but uh, uh, not so uh, large uh, comparing other case, and uh, uh, more increase in this blue line. Uh, that is Jordan's force. So this case not uh, so large increase in. In a shop. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Natalia. Does anyone have other questions? Yeah, shall we close uh, today's webinar? Thanks for talking. Thanks a lot, Takemi. It's a great talk and.